Let's talk about why fungal acne does not exist. I hear you, the bumps on your face are very much there and real, but trust me, no matter how many people use the term, fungal acne is not a thing. Malassezia folliculitis, on the other hand, is, and it is what people mean when they say they have fungal acne. But in order to know how to prevent and treat this condition, you need to understand where it comes from, and if you do that, you will see why it is very much not acne. Let's talk all things Malassezia folliculitis. What is it, why you get it, and how you'll get rid of it. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Dr. Anne, a physician passionate about skincare and well aging. First things first, fungal acne isn't technically acne. Shocking, right? Traditional acne is caused by bacteria growing in clogged pores, and so called fungal acne or Malassezia folliculitis is caused by an overgrowth of yeast in said pores, but without them being clogged. Yes, you heard that right, yeast, like the kind in bread. This pesky fungus thrives on your skin and causes those frustrating tiny bumps. Acne has by definition comedones, so blackheads and whiteheads. Malassezia folliculitis does not have clogged pores, so no comedones. No comedones, no acne. So, if the tiny bumps you see on your face are not whiteheads, what are they? They are an inflammation in the hair follicle caused by an overgrowth of Malassezia yeast. Malassezia fufu, often also referred to as Puteosporum ovale, is present on everyone's skin. You all know that we have a skin microbiome made up of different bacteria, fungi, and even mites. As long as it is in balance, everything is fine, but if something offsets this balance and one of the different components starts to grow much more than usual, that often leads to problems. In this case, it is that yeast overgrowth paired with a genetic disposition and contributing lifestyle factors. Factors like humidity, sweat and even some skincare products can create a perfect breeding ground for this yeast. It can be hard to spot the difference between Malassezia folliculitis and acne for the untrained eye, or even for the trained eye there might be difficulties, as you can absolutely have both at the same time, meaning the Malassezia folliculitis hides behind the acne. We already established that the key difference lies in the cause and appearance. Regular acne has clogged pores and can present as lesions of different shapes and forms. Think blackheads, whiteheads or cysts caused by bacteria. Malassezia folliculitis, on the other hand, shows up as monomorphic, meaning mono one and morphic shaped, so uniform, often itchy bumps caused by a yeast. The location can be different too, with Malassezia folliculitis often showing up on the forehead or jaw sparing the central face, while acne usually affects the T-zone and spreads from there. Both can show up on the body, especially on the chest and back. Diagnosing Malassezia folliculitis can be tricky. While you can start with a self-assessment, itchy uniform bumps that don't respond to acne treatments are a pointer in the right direction, a definite diagnosis often requires a visit to your dermatologist. Here's a quick checklist for a first impression, not intended to replace a doctor's visit. Do you see comedones? Yes for acne, no for Malassezia folliculitis. Do the lesions itch? No for acne, yes for Malassezia folliculitis. Have you tried acne treatment as recommended by guidelines and for several weeks without seeing improvement? No for acne, yes for Malassezia folliculitis. Have you been diagnosed with Malassezia folliculitis in the past before? No for acne, yes for Malassezia folliculitis. But remember, you can have both at the same time. At the doctor's office, they will either do a skin scraping to look at it under the microscope or use a special lamp called a wood lamp that uses UV light and will make the yeast glow. If your skin is extra glowy, you probably have overgrowth. Anyone has Malassezia furfur living on their skin, but only certain people react with inflammation, so there is a genetic component that influences your individual immune reaction. So this is the first risk factor, being genetically predisposed. The second thing you'll need is overgrowth. Malassezia fufu feeds on your sebum, so the more sebum you produce, the better it can grow. Having oily skin is risk factor number two. I mentioned before that usually the different microbes keep each other in check, so if you reduce some of them, Malassezia has it easier to thrive. Topical or systemical antibiotics or harsh cleansing 
that reduces the bacteria naturally present is the third risk factor. If you are immunocompromised because you're on steroid medication, ill or have a poorly controlled diabetes, your risk for disbalances in the skin's microbiome increases as well. So a compromised immune system is risk factor number four. And lastly, there's lifestyle factors like living in a humid climate with increased sweating, sweating through exercise that isn't rinsed off as soon as possible, tight clothing that traps the sweat and sebum and causes friction. All these are risk factors as well. Basically, if you live in a sauna and love spandex, you're a prime candidate. You will often hear the recommendation to use fungal acne safe skincare, but let me assure you, the role of this place isn't half as big as it's made out to be. The main factor for malassezia folliculitis is the sebum in your skin, and that is influenced by genetics and hormones much more than it is through skincare. Yes, using lighter formulas, especially if your skin is oily and you live in a hot climate, is a good idea, and maybe also stay clear of slugging, which will also trap not only hydration, but also everything else underneath the layer of Vaseline. But banning everything that says oil on the label isn't necessary. If you want to be extra cautious, experiment with avoiding long-chain fatty acids like olive oil, but as JLo has shown, skincare is individual. Some might get malassezia folliculitis when using it, others will look 20 years younger thanks to olive oil. Other than that, keep your skin dry and cool, wear breathable fabrics and wash your workout clothes regularly. While malassezia folliculitis isn't contagious, remember, everyone has it on their skin anyway, it can transfer in the person affected from one region to another. Treatment involves antifungal medications like ketoconazole or clotrimazole, not antibiotics as it is not caused by bacteria. Over-the-counter dandruff shampoos can work as a face wash as they contain ketoconazole, but depending on their formulation can also be quite harsh on the skin. Don't use them every day or even twice a day. See if your skin tolerates them four to five times a week and have patience. Nothing will work overnight. It will take at least a month to see results. Sometimes the yeast sits too deep in the hair follicle, so the shampoo face wash can't sufficiently reach it. In this case, antifungal medication might be necessary for which you need to see a doctor. And in other cases, you might have a folliculitis, but not one caused by malassezia. Other microorganisms like staph or gram-negative bacteria can cause that too, and you need a skin swab and a microscope to differentiate that. So, if you have self-diagnosed and started treating things at home, but don't see the results you want despite being consistent over more than a month, go see a doctor. Chances are you'll need more than you can get without their help. Some bad news to end this video. If you had malassezia folliculitis or fungal acne once, you will most likely get it again whenever the stars, or in this case the risk factors, align. You will never get rid of the yeast completely and shouldn't, it is part of your microbiome, so if you are predisposed, any overgrowth will trigger another round. And there you have it, fungal acne demystified. Got more questions? Drop them in the comments below. I will link to more videos you might find interesting on the screen and add links to my Instagram and blog in the description box. And if you want exclusive Q&As, behind the scenes content or just get more involved, become a channel member, I would love to have you join the community. See you soon, bye!